Alright guys, I'm going to become my last video, but I moved both the electric eel from a 75 gallon to a much bigger tank because it's getting bigger and eating really well. Well, part of that is that I got a brand new tank. Well, let me just show you guys what it looks like. So here's this tank. You shot my, caught my last video, but if you notice on this tank here, there are no lids whatsoever. So you put down here, no lids, no lids. Now, what a lot of people do is they go to the aquarium store. You can buy lids as you see on this tank right here. There's a lid here. There's a lid here, and even on my bigger Stingray tank, there's a, there's a lid here. So you, you actually can buy these, but they can be very, very expensive. So I'm going to show you guys how to actually go to Home Depot, measure everything out, and build your own lid. The first thing you do, let me show you what it looks like, walk you over here, is I want you guys to grab a ruler. You turn on the brightness, and you actually can see it. I right, better get yourself a ruler, okay? Get a utility knife. And I'm gonna show you the next part. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna measure the actual tank itself. So what you're gonna do is get down low, you're gonna measure front and then this side. And the reason being, you guys can barely see in the back, but there's already water dripping stair. There's a lot of evaporation here. And obviously, I don't want this guy, well, let me see if I can brighten it up so you guys can actually see it. I don't want him getting out, so there it is. So again, from here to here, measure right there. So you all water droplets there because of the sponge filter there, and obviously I want to keep down evaporation to save on water itself. So let me go ahead and throw you guys on my other camera and show you how to build this. So I'm back here, and obviously this table that I have, and what I showed you on Bolt's tank, I have to build, you know, lids for it. And you can buy lids on, 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 on the aquarium store, you can buy lids online, on Facebook, whatever. But what I did instead is that I went and got this polycarbonate panel from Home Depot. <clears throat> this one has been cut already for these other tanks. So actually using lids on this tank, you can see right here, I got one big lid that I had to build for this tank itself. Obviously to keep down evaporation and to make sure they don't jump out because some fish in here are jumpers. But point is, I got this sheet for like 15 bucks at Home Depot or Lowe's or any hardware store or even online. You can actually take a utility light, make sure it's sharp, get a ruler. Obviously I already measure my tank. So you measure not the outside, but the inside where it actually sits in the tank. So most people are going to measure around, let's say around the tank. You actually actually measure where, the panel where it sits in. Most tanks that have actually a, um, uh, let's say, uh, a rim around the tank, right? Not rim, like a rim, or has, uh, what I saw your Volt's tank has a bracket, right? So what you usually measure inside where the indentation is. And what I'm going to do is pretty much, I already got the measurements. So what I probably need to do is, is grab a marker. That will help you guys out and help me out as well, too. So I just got a marker, <clears throat> and on top of this is actually plastic you can pull off once you get it cut, but it's been pretty simple. I'm going to measure 16 and 3 quarters wide, and sorry, long, and 22 and 3 quarters long. So pretty much it's going to be a very, very easy thing to cut. So pretty much what I'm going to do, I already know my measurements, so I'm going to measure um, exactly right here. And don't worry about being perfect because you can always cut that out when you need it. So don't even be hard on yourself. I'm going to measure from the edge down, 22 and a quarter. Measure it over. Boom. Create another line, which I want it. And make that here. And perfect. That is actually what I've done. So a marker, a ruler, and a carbonate panel. Now, if your utility knife is dull, it's going to be hard cutting it through. Also, you got to apply a little bit of pressure. So what I like to do is take it to the end of my table, which I'm going to do now. <clears throat> take it to the end of my table, which I can, I'm actually going to cut. But they may, it may not grow through all the way, but let me show, let me show you what's going to happen. The cut, you can hear it moving. Make sure, I usually leave about a little bit out. I don't push all the way up, a little bit out, so at least I can use more force to actually keep my line straight and dig in. I'm going to cut the panel. That's not straight. Now be a little bit slow so you can make mistakes very, very easily. We're cutting the panel itself. Then I'm going to go this way. Now, all the time, it doesn't cut all the way through. So don't worry about that too much. 
This idea is you can always still cut and modify. So I'm just trying to cut as slow as I can, make sure I stay within that line. It's easy for a sharp knife to get away from you pretty quickly, especially if you're in a hurry like I am. I just want to kind of get this done, put on top of the tank, make sure the bolt doesn't jump, actually jump out. I cut it from there. So push all this down. Don't need this stuff. Sorry, done. So pretty much it didn't break the first time. So I'm going to do is apply a little bit more pressure and actually get it cut all the way through. So now I'm going to fully extend the knife all the way out and pretty much cut through the last little bit of that panel. Like I said, it's not about being 100% perfect with the cut, but about more or less, I just want to get on top of that tank, make sure it doesn't actually jump out. And yeah, voila. So I already cut. I'm going to cut the last little bit of in. That piece is off that I don't need. Like I said, I had to cut through the panel itself, so apply a little bit of extra pressure. And make sure I cut all, make sure I cut all the way through on the panel itself, and then I'm gonna show you guys the finished product. But it's really easy to do. You may have to pass through a couple of times just to break through the panel itself. Let's see, oh, it's almost there. You cut this part. Oh, some people do, you flip it over, you can do it that way too. But I'm just gonna, so I'm already there. So I'm just gonna cut it right through. There you go, see, each time, a couple passes, and it should be just fine. And the reason why it's hard to cut, is like I said, I kept the film on top of the panel and it's trying to cut through that. There we go. And there's a film. The reason I left the film on itself, you don't have to. I left it on just in case I messed up the measurements. I need a little more wiggle room. So obviously, there's your part of the comment panel. It uses for any tank, definitely keep the moisture down. I use it for my 300 to keep the fish inside moisture down, but that's an easy process. Cheap to buy on, on any hardware store, even on Amazon. A utility knife, a ruler, you got a cheap panel for all your aquariums. Okay, so I'm all done with the project, and you can see that the panels are already in. So pretty much, I had to cut off a small slot for the air hose here. I had to cut a slot out for actually the HOB filter, but it's very snug. And my next step would be to put some handles here to be able to take it on and off, which you can find on Amazon. I'll put a link into the description exactly where you can find them, the cheap handles. I just got them on Amazon for like, I think it was two for like $15, whatever it was. And when I did, I went a step further. I put really sticky double-sided tape because it does come off. That's why I'm using my 300 over there, but they're snug, they're tight. It's gonna stay inside there, at least keep them down. And I always, most, um, <clears throat> be it my African uh, lungfish or the eel, you always have to leave a little room up top so they can breathe. If it's too far up, they can pop through it pretty easy. So that's the case. I keep a little water right here. I need to, uh, you know, put a brick on top to keep it down, but that's just, how you make cheap polycarbonate panels, keep the heat in, and obviously keep to the evaporation low, save some money, and very easy to do. So thanks for listening, thanks for watching. Easy, cheap panel to put on any aquarium. So thanks for listening. <laughs>